Always deliver the lecture. So we're going to talk today about the limit comparison S. So yesterday we were talking about, we had an example, I forget the detail, but it was something like this. And we made the observation that this expression here, when n is large, looks like one over n squared. And our ration, and I mean, this is just a fact about polynomials. When a polynomial is large, it looks like its leading term. And n is large, n is going all the way up to infinity. So we sort of made the argument that because this looks like one over n squared, and one over n squared converges. Good morning. It's a, it's a P series. Since this looks like a convergent series, it probably converges. But then we use the comparison test. And in my opinion, the comparison test is kind of, kind of loses the plot. Because when you're using the comparison test and you want to show that something converges, the argument that you're making is, this is smaller than a finite quantity, therefore it is also finite. And that's not really the intuition we have. The intuition we have is not that this thing I've circled is smaller than one over n squared. Our intuition is that it's similar to one over n squared. And being similar to a convergent series makes it convergent. The limit comparison test allows us to use that intuition. And this, by the way, was sort of why we spent time talking about geometric series and talking about key series. Um, so that we would have things to compare other series to. Okay, let me give you just a second to finish copying down. Um, so I, as I say, I'm going to state it and then we'll discuss it. Good morning. And like the integral test and the comparison test before it, the limit comparison test requires that these terms be positive. Um, and like the comparison test before it, the limit comparison test, we're looking at a series A sub N, 
And then we're going to compare it to another series. We're going to compare it to B sub N. And what the limit comparison test says is that if the limit as n goes to infinity of and the order of division doesn't matter here it can be a over n or it can be b over n but if this limit is finite and this limit is positive, then the series A sub n and B sub n both converge or they both diverge. So in terms of the language I've been using, I've been talking about series being similar. If series are similar, it makes sense that they both converge or both diverge. So this limit statement is a statement that the series are similar. But that's, and if they are similar, they both converge or they both diverge. But let's, um, let's try to unpack this. Let's not, let's not leave this just sort of a mystery that the professor says, and you have to believe, why is this true? Why is this limit significant? Well, suppose we have a fraction and it equals some finite non-zero number say a divided by b equals five. Well, that means that one of these numbers is a non-zero multiple of the other. a equals five b in this case. So the statement that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n, if that limit equaled five, what would that mean? That would mean that when n is large, A sub N is about five times B sub N. So when N is small, Maybe these are extremely different. But as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, a sub n gets closer and closer and closer to being five times b sub n. And we stated previously that if we look at the series b sub n, and we look at the series five times B sub N, these series either both converge or both 
diverge. A constant multiple won't change convergence or divergence. And that then is our argument. If this limit equaled a, equals a finite number, equals five, let's say, that as, then as n is getting bigger and bigger, the series are looking more and more like that. And these series either both converge or both diverge. So that's the rationale between this limit being a similarity condition. Now, in theory, you could use the limit comparison test whenever. In practice, the limit comparison test does require a certain amount of intuition, right? Because we're not given any series B sub N. You have to make B sub N up. So you have to go into the problem with some intuition that I think this series looks like that series, and I know whether this, whether that series converges or diverges. And by far and away, the most uh, common situation where we're using the limit comparison test is where the is when the terms we're looking at are algebraic. So like we've got polynomials and we've got square roots and we've got stuff being raised to powers. And that's because I've said it out loud, but let me write it down. Let me enshrine it in our notes. When N is large, a polynomial looks like its leading curve. Let's use this statement to put the limit comparison test to work with an example. Let's look at um, 2n squared plus n minus 1 over 3n to the fifth. And let's try to determine whether this series converges or diverges using the limit comparison test. And in particular, using the intuition that each of these polynomials looks like its leading term when n is a large number. And again, here's why, here's why we wanted to talk about geometric series and P series. I mean, maybe they're interesting in their own sort of way, especially geometric series. But to use the limit comparison test, we have to have series that we can compare things to. And those are often going to be geometric or P-series. In this case, 
two n squared over three n to the fifth. is a constant times a P series. And this P series converges and P for power. I don't know if I ever said that explicitly, but that's why we call them P series. We've got N raised to a power and a P series converges as long as the power is greater than one. So that's why I say that one over n cubed, that series converges. And two thirds of a convergent series also converges. So the argument I'm making here is that this series looks like a convergent series. Therefore, it probably converges. And what the limit comparison test does is allow us to formulate or to formalize, I should say, that argument. Um, I, I warned, well, warned is not quite the right word. I said a while ago that the reason I thought we um, it introduced L'Hopital's rule in, um, in Calc 2 instead of Calc 1 is that L'Hopital's rule mostly gets used in Calc 2. In particular, it gets used a lot when you are taking limits as n goes to infinity, like we are here. But I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, the limit comparison test says, well, if this is our intuition, we should try taking the limit as n goes to infinity of one of these terms divided by the other. It really, um, I, I forget the order I put them in. It, um, it doesn't matter whether you divide this term by the term it looks like, or whether you divide this term by the original. Like going. Well, I guess I erased it. But if this limit as n goes to infinity is finite, if it's five, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the other fraction is also going to be a positive number. It's going to be one fifth. So the order of the division is not significant here. I uh, divided the original series by the thing we're comparing it to. That's probably the most standard way to do it. And then algebra and 
Maybe it's a blessing in disguise that I'm not using the quizzes anymore because these problems have so much algebra. It can be very easy to just do something wrong somewhere and then you get the wrong answer and I and have no idea why. Um, to clear this bigger fraction, we should multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Wait, some, something went wrong. I think what went wrong was just a copying error that that uh, three turned into a two. So and another copying error up here seems to be a mourning for them. There we go. I was thinking something's wrong. I'm not getting what I wanted. Something was wrong. Just as I was telling you how easy it was to make mistakes, I made a mistake. So let's erase that and try this again. We're multiplying the top by the reciprocal of the bottom. So we get 3n cubed times 2n squared plus n minus 1. And down here we have 2 times 3 n to the fifth. And in the bottom, there's nothing to be done. That is what it is. Uh, in the top, we have 6n to the fifth plus 3n to the fourth minus 3n cubed. And now, I mean, just a while ago, I was talking about L'Hopital's rule. Um, your life is going to be easier if you can just look at a fraction like this and take the limit without using L'Hopital's rule, because if you have to use L'Hopital's rule, you're going to have to use it, I think, five times. As to, you keep taking derivatives, and you'll get fourth degree polynomials, and then you take derivatives again, and you'll get third degree polynomials, and you take derivatives again, and you'll get second degree polynomials, and you take derivatives again, and you'll get first degree polynomials, and then maybe you'll be able to take the limit. Or maybe not. Question. Is it possible to just simplify 3n to the third and 3n to the fifth? Simplify. In, in what way? I'm just asking, like 3n to the third and 3n to the fifth. The um, is, is yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, not a, that's not a bad thought. That I, I see what you're suggesting. It's not what I was thinking, but I do agree with it. We have this n cubed over that n to the fifth. And the suggestion, as I understand it, is that these cancel, which they do. 
um, we can cancel that n cubed and this n to the fifth. turns into n squared. And that definitely does make Lopatow's rule a less discouraging proposition. Because now we have quadratics down here. And we're going to have to use Lopatow's rule at most twice, instead of having to use it a bunch of times. So yes, that's definitely a good idea. It's especially a good idea if you're going to use Lopatow's rule. Um, what I was starting to say is, I mean, at some point you've you've probably learned to just find the horizontal asymptotes of rational functions and the limit as n goes to infinity of a rational function is its horizontal asymptote. So if you remember how to do that, that you just divide the leading terms, you might get away without using Lobatow's rule at all. The limit is the horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote is one. If you don't remember that, we can do this. Limit as n goes to infinity of 6n squared plus 3n minus 3. Did I not? Ah, I skipped, uh, skipped a frame. 6n squared plus 3n minus 3. over 6n squared. This is indeterminate. I, I know I often at this point just kind of dive into Lopatow's rule without a lot of comment, but it's always worth asking yourself, can I use Lopatow's rule here? Is it actually a proof? And this is an indeterminate form. It is infinity over infinity. Lobatow's rule is appropriate. And we get 12n plus 3 over 12n. This is still indeterminate. And now when we take the derivatives, we get a constant, we get one. So the limit is one. One is a positive number, it's greater than zero. Um, so we want the limit to be between zero and infinity, not including zero, not including infinity. Um, it needs to be a positive number, which it is. And as long as it's a positive number, um, the details don't actually matter whether we get one or three or seven or 17, as long as we get a positive number, the limit comparison test tells us that the series both converge and both diverge or both diverge. And 
here. Um, we've now finished this problem, basically. This series over here in the upper right of the frame, this converges. So the limit comparison test says that this series converges as well. Any questions about this so far? Another place that the limit comparison test often gets used is if you have exponential functions mixed with slower growing functions like I think maybe I'll be wrong. Always a possibility. There's no one size fits all solution here. But I'll bet that the limit comparison test can be used to evaluate this series and to tell us that this series converges. And here's my logic, and here's where it's going to be helpful to have some intuition about what functions are like. We've got this quadratic to the power of n. And a quadratic increases really quadratic, uh, not a quadratic, exponential. And exponential functions increase really quickly. There's a reason that like exponential growth has kind of entered the popular language and people who have never taken a math class and don't know what exponential growth is mathematically still understand if they hear that phrase that you're talking about fast growth. Now, quad this quadratic is also growing. But my intuition is that this exponential is going to grow so much faster than this quadratic, that this quadratic might as well not be there. I mean, let's go to Desmos if Firefox ever wants to load for us. Let me remind myself what we're looking at. Three to the N plus N squared minus N. This most is it going to like it if I use n, so let's use x. Here's, let's see, it was minus n squared plus, plus n squared minus n. Got these reverse. So, Here's this exponential, and here's three to the power of x. And I mean, clearly, if you look down here, these, um, these things don't look much like one another, but you're letting n 
I have to use X instead of N to make Desmos graph this, but you're letting N get really big. I mean, you're going from N equals one to N equals infinity. So the fact that they look different down here doesn't really bother us. We want to know what they look like. when that N is getting a B. Let me graph settings. X does not have to be negative. Graph settings, man, this grows fast. Let's let X go from negative 10 to positive. N there. You can see the differences between these graphs down here, but as we grow a little, these graphs merge and become visually indistinguishable from one another. So, Here's three to the X plus X squared minus X. There's what happens if I get rid of the X squared minus X and you can't even see a difference. So my argument then is, okay, we can have that N squared minus N, but that's not going to really affect the series. Is. And two to the n over three to the n. Here's a bit of algebra that students occasionally stumble on. You need to be able to rewrite that as two thirds to the nth power. And this is geometric. And it converges. It converges because the absolute value of two thirds is less than one. So this is, this sounds like the limit comparison test. The argument that we're making here, well, this series looks like a convergent series, so I'll bet it converges. That is a limit comparison test style argument. So let's, um, let's see what happens if we hit this thing with the limit comparison test. If we take two to the n over three n squared, three to the n plus n squared minus one. And we divide by two to the n over three to the n. So this is um, the limit as n goes to infinity of three to the N times two to the N over two to the N times three to the N plus N squared minus one. And 
Oof. This might actually end up being pretty ugly. But let's, let's try to fight through to the end. Um, two to the end times three to the end is six to the end. This is definite, this limit is definitely one. But can we show that it's one? The, the uh, details might get in the way of finishing out this problem. Um, and the problem here is that if we hit this with Lobatow's rule, the numerate, the top is about, is going to remain about the same. You'll get a natural log in the top, but the bottom is just going to get more and more complicated because if you use Lobatow's rule, that two to the n times n squared question. Well, I am not sure if we can eliminate two to the end with the baron two to the end, the first limit, two to the end divided by two to the end. Two to the end divided by two to the end. The first yeah, time. yeah, yes. man. This is the second time I, uh, my habit of just not simplifying these expressions and then multiplying stuff out has come to bite me twice here. That's an excellent suggestion. This two to the n and that two to the n absolutely do cancel each other out. And all of the bad stuff I was worried about is not going to happen. We're left with this limit, and we can absolutely take this limit using Lopetau's rule. Although, speaking both to you and anyone who's watching this recording, you might have to go back to your textbook and to remind yourself. I mean, we know how to take the limit of e to the x, taking the limit or e to the n in this case, taking the limit of three to the n, the derivative of three to the n. My words are all garbled today. We might not remember this derivative. And I mean, I'm using the royal we here. I definitely remember the derivative. Students might have to look this up. I never asked you to memorize this. But if we've got an exponential function with a base other than e, taking the derivative gives us the exponential function, but it also gives us a natural logarithm of the base. So the derivative of three to the n is three to the n times the natural log of three. Yeah. And in the denominator, once again, the derivative of three to the n is three to the n times ln three. The derivative of n squared is two to the n, 
the derivative of n is, I mean, the derivative of negative one is zero. And we can hit this. We're gonna have to use Lobatow's rule twice more, uh, formally speaking. Um, that natural log of three is just a constant. It just sits there. Don't get confused and use the product rule or anything like that. When we take the derivative of three to the n, we once again get a natural log of three. Maybe we can, maybe at this stage in our career, we can just see what's happening and we don't have to write the last step out. But if we take the derivative again, we'll just get another ln3 up here. And if we take the derivative again down here, the two vanishes and every single term in this fraction cancels. L1 three, L1 three, L1 three, three to the N, and we wind up with one. And again, the specific limit we wind up with actually doesn't matter. What's significant is that we get a finite positive limit. So one is greater than zero, it's between zero and infinity. These series, our intuition is correct. They really are similar. The geometric series converges. So this series converges. Okay, so um, try to do the homework. The homework's been posted, it's due Sunday. Um, I will say, I mean, right up front, I think for some students, uh, at least the early series homework is tricky. I mean, this homework will include the comparison test which I think is maybe the hardest thing we do in this class. So um, if you don't get it done, you can, I mean, you can talk to me about it Monday, that's fine. It, the due date's posted as Sunday, give it a shot, try to get it done by then. If you need to talk to me about it though, that's fine. Just do that on Monday. I will see you Monday.